All right, let's warm up real quick. So two to four to six, eight, 10, 12, we quickly see that we're adding two every time. And so this is what we called an arithmetic sequence. Because the, and the common difference was two. Common difference is what we call D. And then here we're multiplying by two every single time. Multiplying by two. And so this is what we're going to call a geometric sequence. And so we're going to have to know that vocab arithmetic when we add the common difference. And this is what we're going to call a common ratio. So this is an example of a geometric sequence. A sequence where you multiply multiply by the same thing. every time. So, multiply by the same thing every time, that's what we call a common ratio, and we're going to use the letter R. So, common, common difference, D, for arithmetic, common ratio, R, for geometric. So, if we plot these terms, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, we end up with one, two, three, four. So we have six, 12, 24, and 48. If you continue the pattern backwards, um, the y-intercept here would be three, which is gonna be very critical in this one. Because what I want to look at is we're going to write a formula for this. And our 6, 12, 14, 6, 12, 24, 48 is, this is just 6. This is 6 times 2. This is 6 times 2 times another 2. 6 times 2 times 2 times 2. And so this is... 2 to the 1st, 2 to the 2nd, 2 to the 3rd. And so we're going to write an equation where we have, starting off with the 6, we multiply by 2 and then raise it to a power. Some power of n. Now, if we plug in 1, we want to get 6. So if we plug in 1, right now we get 6 times 2, and we get 12. So what we need to do is we need to subtract 1 every time we plug in from our exponent. So 6 times 2 to the n minus 1. Or, if you wanted to, you could think of this as 3 times 2, and 3 times 2 times 2. And so another way to represent it is 3 times 2 to the n. Um, but we are going to most often use this one, just because it's easier, because it has the first term in it. This one has the 0 term in it the three that we talked about. So using this pattern, let's do this again. First off, what we need to find is the common ratio. Now we see two again, except now it's going down because four divided by eight, two divided by four is one half, and that's our R value. And so now it's starting at eight, So what we did for the last one, we had our first term, a sub 1, we had our ratio, so 8 times 1 half raised to the n minus 1. Or if you prefer, 16, the 0 term, times 1 half to the n. We are going to get much more used to the top one. Um, next one. A little harder to tell with some of these fractions, but once you get to negative 3, 9, negative 27, 
you can tell that the ratio is negative 3. If you have a, ever have a hard time finding the ratio, do some division. And just do 9 divided by negative 3. Negative 27 divided by 9. Divide the term by the term in front of it. And so then you get a sub n, the first term, 1 ninth, times our ratio, negative 3, raised to the n minus 1. Or, you could use the term prior to that, which would be negative 1 27th, if we divided by negative 3, raised to the nth, find the zero term. So what we've been doing in the general formula to find the nth term of a geometric sequence will always be a sub 1, your first term, r, your common ratio, and n equals the number term. Typically, your variable, well, it's always your variable in your equation, in your nth term equation. We've also been doing a sub n equals a sub 0, zero term. the one before the first, times r raised to the n. And that works as well. This is the one we see more commonly published in the books and all that. So, let's keep going. Write a rule for the nth term and find a sub 8 for the following geometric sequences. So, we just wrote a sub n, a sub 1 times r raised to the n minus 1. It's that formula we just looked at our first term, 3, times, if we have negative 12 over 3, that's negative 4. We get the same thing, so r is negative 4 to the n minus 1. Resist the urge to multiply these two together. I'm saying this because um, order of operations. We have to do exponents before we do multiplication. So this is not equal to negative 12 to the n minus 1. Not true. Order of operations. Then find a sub 8. a sub 8, 3, negative 4, 8 minus 1, because we want to find the 8th term. And so, 3 times negative 4 to the 7th power, negative 49, 152. All right, so this one I'm going to go through logically first because we're at a sub 3. If we have negative 96 and we want to find a sub 2, we divide by 2 to go the other way. And so we would get negative 48 and then a sub 1 would be negative 24. And so your a sub n term would be a sub 1 times r to the n minus 1. Same thing over and over again. So negative 24 times 2 to the n minus 1. So a sub 8 is negative 24 times 2 to the 8 minus 1. or negative 3072. So we just went backwards. We used our common ratio to find, go back and find the first term. We can also use our a sub 3 being negative 96 equaling whatever a sub 1 is times 2 to the 3 minus 1 power. And so you get negative 96, a sub 1 equals 2 to the second times 4, and so a sub 1 is negative 24 after you divide by 4. And that's how you might find the equation if you had a higher term and had to find it that way.